Okay, here's a quick demo of my um, new project, which is, I call it the Chip Stomp. It's a um, digital effects pedal or effects processor, to be a bit fancy. Uh, the idea being it's for a bass guitar and can do the classic kind of things like uh, tremolo, uh, flanger, echo, uh, a bit crush effect as well. Uh, all at the same time if you want and uh, within a fairly easy to use interface. It combines kind of two separate projects. One is um, called the uh, Stomp Shield which is by Open Music Labs which is essentially this half. It's uh, an analog uh, front end and, and back end uh, that uh, for handling taking in a, a, an audio signal, um, filtering out the frequencies you don't want, centering it correctly for use for the ADC, for the for the digital side of things, and then taking again the output, the uh, pulse width modulation output from the digital side and producing a nice analog signal from it again. It's basically an op-amp with a bunch of uh, resistors and capacitors for want of a better description. Um, it's a really nice little setup and it makes it really easy to deal with audio uh, and it was really handy to find that the, these guys open music labs had already done basically all the hard work on the analog side of things which is not my strength at all um, the four main pots are gain for the incoming signal feedback to, to feedback between the output of the actual the whole system and the input um, volume control of the final output and a mix between, if you like, the wet and the dry, so the original signal and the signal that you've messed with. Um, this side of the project is uh, the digital side. Underneath the little organic LED display there is um, a microchip PIC32MX, uh, 32 kilobytes of RAM and 128K of program memory. Uh, we've got a rotary encoder here for input and a couple of buttons. Um, sorry, knocked the whole thing there. Um, I'm actually not, the rotary encoder's got a button on it as well that I'm not actually using at the moment, but at the moment, uh, maybe later I'll get round to writing something. So it's Arduino compatible, this is my first attempt at doing an Arduino project, um, which in some ways is a bit of a pain, but in other ways it's quite nice, because it means it's all written in C++ instead of C, and I can make use of some great libraries, like the Adafruit um, OLED library, which I used as a basis for what I'm do using to drive the screen here. Uh, as well as um, a couple of other things. It's, it's quite nice to be able to crib and use other people's uh, work as a good starting point for what you do yourself. So if I plug it in and we turn it on. Now, the final thing won't be used from a USB port. The idea is that you use it from battery, but at the moment I haven't got a battery connector in there, so I'm powering it through the USB. You, the, you can actually choose whether you power it through USB or through from a battery, but at the moment it's USB. Now. I'm not a bass player, I don't even own a guitar, I'm not a guitar player at all, This is the, uh, the design is for my brother. Um, so the, the audio samples I'm using are actually from the uh, freesound.org website, so you know, <laughs> not, no live music here. So we plug the input in there, and we plug the output into my speakers. Let's hope we can hear that. Okay, oh, not quite. A little bit more. There we go. Simple bass line. Now, at the moment we've got four effects that work quite well. We have tremolo, we have a flanger, we have an echo effect, a bit crush, which allows you to reduce the sample frequency in the bit rate and the bit depth. And we also have a pitch bend, but that doesn't work very well at the moment. So let's start with something simple, a tremolo effect. There we go, you can hear it kind of wobbling away. We can choose how strong we want that effect to be. We can choose the frequency as well. Produce some very odd sounds. We can see a little clip LED flashing away there. That's giving us an indication that the signal is overloading the internal. signal and the messed about with signal. Um, turn that off. The next effect is a flanger effect which is uh, the idea is it mimics the idea of having a tape player where you put your finger on the reel of tape as it goes around giving it kind of a wobbly kind of whirl, whirl, whirl sound. So there you can hear kind of 
increase the, the, the mix so you get more of the wobble or less of the wobble. And we can change the frequency that it wobbles at. Depending on the frequency that you're the, the original signal depends on what sort of frequencies work in a more interesting way. Bass guitar about sort of somewhere around 10 hertz is kind of an interesting kind of sound for a flanger. We've also got an echo which we can do up to just under a second. I think it's about 800 milliseconds or 700 milliseconds worth of delay. Uh, we combine that with the analog feedback and you can create an echo effect. there with the echo without the echo we can also boost that by using more feedback if I press pause on the music we say it's not pressing pause if I press pause so you can hear the echo effect. There we go. And we also have a bit crush. Now, bit crush is a way of kind of creating distortion essentially by introducing artifacts from the sampling. So we can reduce the, the bit rate from 16 bits, which is what we're using. Well, actually, the, the ADC and the pick is 10 bit, but we're up sampling it internally to 16 bits. We can reduce that down. Oh, turn the effect on. We start to introduce distortion. Actually, it's surprising how low a bit bit rate you can have, bit depth you can have, and still sound good. Nine bits is kind of seems to be the breaking point. Go up to ten or eleven, it you don't really notice any difference. Three bits, four bits, one bit. Quite interesting kind of. Sounds. We go back up to 16 bit and we can change the, the sampling rate. So the default sampling rate is 44 kilohertz, but we can drop that down by five fractions, so down to eight. We introduce harmonics then. We drop the bit depth as well. Mess, but audio, from an audio point of view, quite an interesting sound. I've also got a pitch bend effect that I haven't really got working yet, it's a bit of a mess. So we can change the, uh, the pitch of the sound without, or, without altering its duration. Now, as I said, we've got a lot of noise there because the, the wrap as it loops around isn't working very well. Obviously that kind of whiny noise is not the great best thing to have in a guitar effects pedal. So as I said, not exactly complete. And the cool thing is because it's digital, you can have them all going at the same time. So we can have a bit of tremolo, maybe not quite such a heavy tremolo. And then introduce maybe a bit of echo, but maybe not so much echo. reverb rather than echo and there's more we could go right out and as a reminder this is the uh, the original signal and that's the messed with signal now the input as I said is a 10-bit built-in analog to digital converter within the pick so nothing fancy running at 44 kilohertz uh, and the output is using two 8-bit um, pulse width modulation signals which are mixed together uh, using resistors to produce a single 16-bit um, uh, signal which is filtered through the, the op-amp producing an analog output. Uh, internally everything's handled as 32-bit because the PIC being a 32-bit processor handles 32-bit nice and easy and that gives us loads of headroom to handle things like clipping and uh, it's just nice and easy to use internally. 
everything is handled internally in terms of memory, so we've got 32 kilobytes to play with, which is quite a lot for this sort of thing, uh, and 128 kilobytes of program memory, which is loads. So I don't think I think I've used about half of it at most, and most of that is things like fonts and things for driving the screen. And so there you go. A couple of other sample tracks, maybe. I don't know what these sounded like beforehand, so probably not the best best examples. Here's a playing guitar. Now, of course, we've got the uh, tremolo, so that's without the tremolo. And we can put a bit of tremolo in there. for voice as well, so you could, put, you, know, you could put your own voice through this and create Dalek sounds. So there you go, just a quick introduction. Um, just got to build another one now to send to my brother and uh, finish off the software, so there you go. hope that you found that interesting. Thanks very much for, for watching.